about the holy matrimony. And uh, if you remember, we spoke about the meaning of matrimony, marriage. We spoke about the goals. We spoke about the institution of the sacrament in the church. And we spoke lastly about the characteristics of the Christian marriage, the characteristics of the Christian marriage. Tonight, let us talk about some, some principles and conditions of the Christian Orthodox marriage. I'm going to say some points, and I repeat some points concerning the conditions on which the Christian marriage should be taking place. And what are the principles that the Christian Orthodox marriage should not take place or cannot take place? First thing I want to mention here, and please, uh, for, for the deacons, to pay attention because although this is, um, you know, you're still young, but you have to know that because this is one of the sacrament of the church that you pray in. The first thing is the Christian Orthodox marriage has or is a permanent, permanent means last, forever, permanent, sacred, religious bond. Until this point, we are agreeing. Perform it publicly means to, it has to be in public, in front of all the people, all the congregation, all the church. It has to be performed publicly, means in front of all the church. And it has to be between a Christian Orthodox man and a Christian Orthodox lady. It cannot be between a Christian Orthodox man and a Christian Orthodox man. And it can't be between a Christian Orthodox lady and a Christian Orthodox lady. Of course, we all know that. The second point that is important about our marriage please pay attention. The official, the official Christian Orthodox ceremony of marriage has to be religious and yani religious that mean that the ceremony has to take place in the church in the church I cannot as a priest go and marry a couple outside the church it has to be inside the church not only inside a church but it has to be by an Orthodox priest, Orthodox priest, who has proper church authority. So it has to be in a church performed by an Orthodox priest who has proper authority to conduct the marriage. Is there any exception? only one exception the priest can go outside the church to perform 
a ceremony for the matrimony, the holy matrimony, only in one condition. If there is a persecution going on in the city or the country, and there is danger on the bride and the bridegroom to come to church. You know that there is a big celebration for the bride and the bridegroom to come to church. Even when they enter, there is a big celebration entering the church itself. So if there is a danger that they may lose their lives, there's a risk for their lives, this is the only condition permitted for the priest to go outside and perform the ceremony. But of course, it is not the case in our church. Number three, the Christian Orthodox marriage will not be conducted. It can't happen. The Abuna cannot start praying without the consent means the agreement, means everybody say yes. The consent of both parties, both, both parties means the couple. The man has to be agreeing and the lady has to be agreeing or the young girl has to be agreeing. Number four, the marriage or the Christian Orthodox marriage will not be conducted unless the groom is 18, at least 18 years of, old, of age. The groom has to be at least, at least 18 years old. And the bride has to be at least 16. That doesn't mean that we, we have to be married on the age of 18 and 16. No, this is the least age that, that the priest can perform an official ceremony of holy matrimony so the age the proper age has to be over 18 or over 16 or over 18 for the man 16 for the young lady number five are you clear with that because i'm gonna ask are you clear yes. everybody listening yes. okay number five it is not permitted that the sacrament of matrimony take place during seasons of fastings. May in fact, I give you all and I is a ghost. It's not going to happen. There is no abuna, there is no bishop, there is nobody will allow this to happen. It is not permitted that the sacrament of matrimony take place during seasons of fastings. That's it? No. Or times, again, or times just before fasting begins. I cannot come the day before the fasting begin and say to the church, I want to get married. The church will say no. Why? What is the reason? Why the church has to put this rule? For it would be very hard for the newly married couple to abide by the commandment of fasting. Either of food or marital relationships. Logically, it is hard for a newly married couple to fast the day that they are, or the next day that they are married. So in order for them to abide by the commandments of the church to fast, we tell them, we advise them, we try to help them that make the time of the marriage away from the fasting seasons. If there is exception, Sorry, if there is emergency, then they have to take an absolution and permission from the bishop. That is the only condition. But the bishop has to know what is the emergency, if it is really emergency, and he has to ask 
and know every detail. Number six. The Christian Orthodox matrimony or matrimonial rites or the ceremony is performed for virgin couples. The essential prayer that we pray in the holy matrimony is for virgin couples. And please put underline the word virgin. But somebody will come and ask, but Abuna, sometimes we see that a lady, that she is a widow and she's marrying again. Or a man, his wife died and he's a widow and he wants to marry again. In this case, what the church will do the church will change the prayer into another prayer called the prayer of forgiveness and pray this prayer in the ceremony. But originally, the prayer is for virgin couples. For what? Virgin couples. Number seven and the last point that we're going to speak about today that Christian Orthodox marriage is forbidden. Forbidden means no way. If there are any legal, ecclesiastical, or personal prohibitions. What is the meaning of that? I'll give you small examples. Examples. If Abuna find a brother and a sister, comes to him and say, we want to, uh, to get married. That's one of the conditions that it is forbidden for Abuna to conduct the ceremony. Because brother cannot marry his sister and a sister cannot marry her brother. That's one condition. Another example. One of the couple is still married to another, either uh, 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 another lady or another man. And he wants to have another uh, spouse. Of course, Abuna will tell him, no. Because as we spoke before, that the, our church believe in one wife, one husband. Number three, and the last point. If a couple come to Abuna, and tell him we want to get married. And Abuna discovered that one of them is insane. You know what is the meaning of insane? His mind is not there. So he cannot perform the ceremony. Because this marriage will be doomed to be nulled. It's not going to work. How, how come I, I marry a person who is insane? So Abuna from the beginning, no, that's not going to happen. So those are some examples of the conditions. I know that th this doesn't happen every day, of course, but I'm, I'm just giving you some examples about the conditions that the holy matrimony has to be conducted accordingly. Of course, why the church put all that, those rules and those provisions and those conditions for the sake to protect the Christian family, to protect the Christian family. And also the more important reason is that the holy matrimony is a sacrament. As we said before, it's a religious, a religious ceremony means it has to be in the church uh, a priest has conducted it in front of the altar. Why? Simply because who is marrying the couple? Christ himself. Who is the one who make them, and instead of two, they become one? Christ himself. And Christ cannot accept anything wrong. So the church tell 
its children, you have to be in the right path in order to get married. Those are some conditions I wanted to mention. In the few weeks to come, we're going to explain some of the rights that we see in the ceremony. Like, for example, why Abuna has uh, the rings in a red uh, robe. Red robe. Why uh, the couples has to wear a crown. All this stuff we're going to speak about next time, God willing. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.